Hey, hello, and welcome to episode 11 of the Duck of Doom. So, um, in previous episodes, we finally did some animations for the um, Duck of Doom himself. Uh, attack animation, fly animations got finished up. We have our shotgun animation, and uh, a little bit farther back, we had the regular duck animation. So now we are ready to attempt to start putting in a little bit of uh, gameplay. Now I have some ideas about how I think I'm going to do this, but um, often ideas you have don't work out and you end up changing things, so bear with me. Um, this is like an exploratory process. I did go ahead and Google some information, trying to um, remind myself about ray casting. Uh, if you recall last time I talked about probably using that technique and I have watched some videos uh, to hopefully reduce some of the pain of learning here, but uh, our implementation may vary. So um, one thing I wanted to talk about is, so uh, Unity has a fairly rich um, set of uh, assets and packages and things available for you. So um, you can make a choice. Um, if you want to, uh, I think it's characters or cross-platform input, I do not recall. Let's just import them and see what happens. Um, so all these assets are available to you as part of um, the Unity platform, and you can certainly um, invent all this yourself, or you can uh, utilize some of this and take shortcuts. Sometimes taking those shortcuts will end up making things feel a bit more generic and people might be able to say, oh, this feels like it was made in Unity. Um, and yeah, true enough, uh, it will give people those feelings. Um, but that doesn't mean you couldn't modify those scripts and then uh, make it your own. That's a good working example. So I'm looking for, yeah, here you go, FPS controllers. <laughs> because our shotgun's kind of a first-person perspective here. So in addition to these um, scripts and packages, there's also the asset store. And uh, up to this point, I've made all the assets myself as good samples uh, to show you what to do, uh, processes of how to use modeling, animation, texturing but um it is perfectly valid and i would say perhaps even more valid to consider purchasing art um, if you become a coder you have to choose um, what is more value of your time if you can buy an inexpensive asset for say ten dollars that would take you two weeks to make something that didn't look half as good maybe that's worth it Okay, so let's go in here. I think the assets are done importing. First person character prefabs. I think this is the one I want. Okay, as you see, this dropped in very close to my gun. So I'm going to put my gun underneath, as a, what they would call a child, and it has its own main camera. So I could either put my camera in there or change this one. Let's find out what happens if we go in here and we press play, because uh, when you have multiple cameras, it sometimes creates a little bit of confusion. See, I wonder. Oh, there's my ducks, and we are falling because of gravity. <coughs> right, let's stop that. Uh, so that camera was fine, and we're gonna call this the uh, player. Make our own prefab, so as we diverge away from theirs, we don't goof it up in case we want to go back or what have you. So let's give the player something to stand on. We'll just create a um, cube. We'll scale it a bit here. And 
and I don't have any intention right now of having the player um, walk about although that could be you know if we liked this game we could end up choosing to do something like that right okay good we're looks like we're not falling although my gun disappeared let's go see what happened in the scene shotgun where are you I am not sure where the shotgun is <laughs> let me pause the scene <coughs> There it is, okay. It's just below a little bit for some reason. So the blue arrow should be the way the camera's facing. If you notice, no matter which way I turn, this is always facing to the right. It's because it's a sprite and it's facing the camera all the time. But the blue arrow is the forward <coughs> axes and then if you click on this camera it shows you where the shotgun this little um, preview isn't showing at all so we do need to reposition this a bit There is a clipping plane. It seems like that should be in range. Oh, I see. Interesting. Is this some. Yeah, Alright. Was I wrong? Alright. Oh, I think. Alright. Maybe this is what's going on. Yeah, if uh, you notice here, these little things facing out these directions, those are the view box of the camera and somehow this is facing the wrong way <laughs> okay getting closer Looking down the barrel of a gun, indeed. All right, let's let's try that. That just looks too cool not to try. Bam, bam! Oh, that is funny. Like that is like um like if you right click in some games and you zoom in, that's hecka zoomed in. Right, it might be time to go ahead and reduce the size of the shotgun a little bit. I guess let's parent this to the camera instead and we will this is going to make it easier 259 216 right. okay now that it's parented there we should be able to more easily reasonable for right now um, oh well I see yeah actually so the scale of this if you recall was so large um, compared to unity units I did mention that very early on 
if I create a game object 3D cube here, that is Unity's one unit, it's like a meter or something, right? So this shotgun is like um, an eight meter long item and, and that's kind of so big that when I face my guy down, it's clipping through the floor. So that's just a sign it's a little bit too much. Now I can still achieve the effect of it looking really big to my camera by scooting it closer. Eh, it's still a tiny bit of clipping, but we'll worry more about that later. Okay, but um, there you go. There's some basic... Uh, it looks like I can actually walk around. I may disable that later. For right now, we just want the ability to aim. So here's one thing that's occurring. As soon as we hit play, our character controller drops down considerably because this plane is below the camera to some extent. So let's see if that's better. Yep, so we still dropped down, just not as far. Okay. And then the other problem is the player's not facing the direction that we want them to, so. might solve that. There it is. Okay. Boom. Boom. All right. Good. Okay. It's going to save that. So we're going to need to fire the gun and then we're going to need to hit the targets. So we're going to need some scripts to identify the ducks and we're going to need one to control the firing of the weapon. So let's get some of that up. Um, create a new folder just because that's what I like to do. So enemies and player. It's maybe too much organization for such a small game, but I'm going to create a new C sharp script. This is just a regular duck. This is a duck of do. Okay, it compiles in the bottom right for a second. So we can go ahead and just drag these on here, even though we haven't done any programming in them yet. And then from the player, player behavior. So in Unity, they like to follow this paradigm of um, components. And I do that a bit, but um. Having too many components can feel really messy to me sometimes. So I do maybe not follow their pattern as much as I could. So one thing we need to make sure of is that um, to hit him, if we use physics at all, which we are going to do, needs to have a collider and a rigid body. Otherwise, a lot of the calculations that we'll use will not work correctly. So, um, the collider could be a mesh collider, but that's, they, they recommend not to use those. So, um, could either do a circle collider, which I think, no, we don't want a 2D one. Uh, it would be a sphere then if it's three. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, and then this, we can go in and see. go. That's good. And then we add a rigid body. And right now we'll say is kinematic, which I believe will keep it from falling. Let me make sure on that. Yes, okay. And then let me press escape if I stop it. Stop it. Oh, Unity, you're killing me. 
trying to control the mouse without turning it away. <laughs> okay, fine. It's going to live edit. Um, let me turn that off just to prove that was the point of the thing that would fall. Yeah, so see, he's falling slowly now. And then same thing with the duck of doom. Component rigid body is kinematic. Add component sphere collider. And then let's edit the collider and make it bigger. Okay, good. Let's make sure it doesn't fall through the sky. Player behavior, did I put that on here? I sure did. Okay, so we're gonna go edit our enemy scripts first. And I don't think I'm gonna need a start or an update. I like to usually just go ahead and take those out. Um, I'll leave them there for now just in case I prove myself wrong shortly. So a duck and a duck of doom should have some health. Uh, here you get into the arguments of public and private. So if I say a public integer health equals 100, then I go back in Unity, and once it compiles, you can see right here, this is visible. The advantage of this is if when I'm tweaking gameplay and I find out that 100 feels like too much or not enough, I can just type in the inspector in Unity and adjust it right here kind of live. Um, the downside of that is if you end up working in any kind of traditional software, having all these public variables, people will go kind of batshit about um, encapsulation and all these things that are public that shouldn't be. So you could very easily keep this private. And then you go back over here. <coughs> And after it compiles, it's going to disappear. So then you don't have any insight to, um, you know, oh, what's his current health? Or I want to adjust it. I need to go into the code every single time. So just, you know, hey, you're designing your own game. Keep in mind what this private public is all about when it's useful to you. Um, in my case, um, I think I'm okay with it being private. Uh, it's a fairly simple gameplay. But what we do have to have public is a method to take damage when they get hit. And uh, traditionally, we put an integer of the amount of damage, right? And so then their health is going to be minus equals the amount. And if the health is ever less than or equal to zero, then they will die. Whoops. Thank you, autocomplete. Oh, stop it, really? Okay, let's do it this way. <laughs> so the die method is going to be private for sure because we don't ever want anyone else to tell this guy to die. He needs to decide for himself if um, the conditions are appropriate for that. And then destroy. And in this case, in Unity, it's a paradigm when you're extending mono behavior. The lowercase game object is referring to this one. So there might be 10 ducks, but each of those ducks has this one script attached to them. And so if that particular duck ever gets below their health threshold, it will destroy itself. So that's a paradigm is that that lower reference to just game objects, it's not defined anywhere in here. That's part of mono behavior. Okay, so that is this duck and um, doing this a little bit inefficient, but we're going to pretty much copy most of that into the duck of doom. There will be more behavior for duck of doom eventually. So um, he's going to be <laughs> That's too much. 500 health, just random number. But he's going to be stronger and harder to kill. And I talked about, I don't, I don't know if we're going to do this, um, but a shotgun, especially a double barrel one, 
there might be a concept of how direct your hit is and if you had a spray of uh, the uh, you know the little shot uh, lead and you might get a more or less direct hit and so uh, there might be a concept of a really direct hit might be two shells worth of pellets and you get like 500 damage maybe or 100 or 200 but an indirect hit if you were off target a little bit uh, might only be a quarter of that because only a few of the pellets hit you um, we can simulate that through math and say um, if your random dot range amount of damage was more or less than this um, then we're going to go ahead and say that it was an indirect hit and if it was more than that then it was a direct hit and if it was like within the top couple of percentiles it was a critical for example okay so now what the player behavior just thinking something through here in my head so so this is to fire the shotgun and in here if button down Just test this uh, debug dot blog for the shotgun. I have done something wrong here. Cannot compare. Okay, so there's. I must be doing this wrong. Uh, I recall the mouse things, and I could use. <coughs> Spacebar and said um, input uh, get button down. I think that's it. If not, I'll go to the API reference. It's hard to memorize everything. Let's try this. So we'll need the console window. Okay, it's complaining my space is not set up. So, um, but it tells you edit project settings input. Fire one. So that should actually work. So this is uh, Unity's kind of input manager, and you can go in here and remap some of these, and there's uh, key mapping descriptions. Um, maybe jump is space, joystick button three. In any case, left control or mouse is zero. That's the other thing I was looking for on the mouse before, so let's try this. Okay, you fired the shotgun. So I'm just left clicking and you see uh, the down here, this number's going up each time I click it. Okay, so that's firing. All right, so each time I fire it, I'm gonna do a ray cast. And physics. You have to look this up. I don't have this all. Um, let me check the reference. Uh, uh, recast hit if physics recast. Here we go.
why is it changing an if statement into here we go <laughs> So here's the parameters um, or all the method overrides that a physics ray cast could do. So um, let's look up the Unity API for that because I, you know, like many of you, I don't do all this all day long every day. Uh, physics ray cast. So here's the parameters. The origin, where is it coming from? The direction, where is it going to? The maximum distance that it should travel. So say you had a kind of weapon that is a short range weapon versus a sniper rifle. The max distance for the sniper rifle would be much longer. And then layer mas it mask is if you're using physics layers, I'm not doing that today. And triggers are physics objects that aren't colliders, they're just um, triggers. So like um, often like little pickups and things. Uh, if you ran into a little, um, you know, like a health pack, it wouldn't stop you from moving, but you would need physics to know that you had collided with it. That's a trigger. All right, so this is from where we're at to uh, we want it to go forward based off of what do they have forward a transform direction this is I don't know why they had to define that transform dot forward yeah see that should work and then, um, do we want to do a distance? I don't think so, no. But we do want to get the information that comes out in a hit. And maybe it's telling me, okay, good. All right, sorry for stumbling through that, but let's go over it again real quick. So we're gonna do the physics ray cast from where we're currently at. So this is again lowercase because it extends from mono behavior. And this is the transform of this current object. And we're gonna take our current position and then we're gonna shoot out an invisible line from where we're at straight forward until it hits something. And that hit is gonna get stored in this raycast, raycast hit information. So they're gonna put any information in there. So, think we can do hit dot collider dot get component game object So in the, the, um, the left and right arrows, we put the type we're looking for, and then we're calling the method after. And I, I because it auto completed the parens for me, and I started typing. I had the type inside the parens, and that's what was wrong. So it should print the name of whatever it hits. So I'm hoping to see Duck of Doom or Duck Prefab, or maybe the cube. Assuming I can aim well enough that it actually hits it. Okay, there is no game object attack to duck prefab. Hmm. So it looks like the raycast point is not exactly where I think it is. 
Oh, um, I see the count is going up, so. Uh, there, oh, the duck prefab is a game object, so. Oh, uh, but it might be in the parent. But that's fine, so at least we know it's kind of hitting that a bit. So instead of that, let's move closer to the, we know it's hitting something, it's just, um, so see, get component, we could do in children or in parent, right? And then it becomes, and it could be component or components. And so we could get all the game objects that exist in the hierarchy, but at this point we don't really want to do all any of that. What we really want to do is get the component of the ducks. So then here's where this becomes interesting is there's so many ways to do this. Um, in the truly component oriented system, you might make a health script and put a health on the duck of doom and the duck prefab. That's one way to do it. My preference is to make an interface. And this interface allows me to do very similar to the component system, but more integrated into the actual class of, in this case, the duck. But there could also be boars, and maybe there's maybe if you keep shooting a tree uh, that you can damage the tree. Uh, other things you're out hunting, right? So if we want um, this to be um, some of the behavior more coupled with the actual um, entity itself, being a duck or a boar or a tree, um, having that separate component creates a problem where, okay, when in the duck behavior, I, I decide that the duck's gonna fly from left to right three times and disappear off the screen. Um, but in his health script, I decide, okay, well, um, if you take damage, he dies. Well, what if with the Duck of Doom, after the third hit, he gets enraged and you've got like two seconds to kill him. He's going to come towards you, get really big. Well, then so I'm having to pass information back and forth between the health script and the Duck of Doom script. If I go ahead and make it an interface, it's already inside that script. So this could go and I could make another folder called interfaces, but this is um, uh, I this is usually for interface damageable is that's one way we could call this interface. So let's double click. And this is no longer extending mono behavior. This is not a class. This is an interface. And conveniently enough, we'll make it do a take damage. Okay. And we don't need any of these. So it's like, wow, that's super simple. Like, what do I do with that? So you take it over to the duck script and now um, this can uh, a class can only extend one other class like you can only have um, you know one mother one father right uh, biologically speaking of course uh, but you can implement multiple interfaces like um, I can take damage I can take healing I can um, implement the I walk interface like um, you're capable of doing many different things and so are other humans right or other uh, mammals can walk they can take damage so if I didn't have take damage in here this would throw an error and say hey you have not implemented a take damage method now I have so we go back where how this all ties back together now is my plain menu player behavior so in the hit uh, hit 
that oh, player <laughs> get component parent right, damageable so and then so what we want to do is we don't know if I shot the ground for instance and there is no damageable component of that damageable might actually be empty null so if damageable is not null meaning empty then let's do damageable dot take damage and we'll say for now 100 can make that more complex like we talked about over time so the reason that this this is object oriented stuff right here the reason when I will just retype it for fun damageable dot so now here's all the actions I can take with this particular object and because the damageable interface has the take damage method that appears in this list and because of the way um, C sharp and model behavior and unity work there are some other kind of like two string methods that are um, given to you for free but this take damage method specifically appeared because that this is here and not because of this it's because of this we're just implementing it here it's a little bit of a tricky term but um, once you do it a few times, it'll start making more sense. Let's make sure we have no errors. Looks good. And then um, now we'll go back and say for this duck. Yeah, he has 100 health, and the Duck of Doom has 500. So let's see if we can hit that one duck a few times. Yeah, boom, he's dead. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not even sure if I'm hitting him. I hit that other duck right away. Maybe I've got something wrong with this guy. Let's do troubleshooting. So what's different? Sphere collider, sphere collider, rigid body, rigid body. Duck script, duck of doom script. Well, looking good so far. let's do some debug in debug.logs Marginally different than I did before. I want to see if this works. Before I did the get component game object, and now I'm just saying the collider dot game object. I'm not sure if that'll work, but let's see. Duck prefab. Okay. Yeah, hits the duck, but not the duck of doom. So I have done something wrong. So disappointing. Either that or <laughs> duck of doom is OP already. <laughs> oh, too funny. Uh, okay, what is going on here? Are they terribly farther away or anything? No, he's actually marginally closer. <coughs> the regular duck. The colliders are very similar. Let me toggle back and forth here to see if anything looks... different. 
things ordered in the opposite order, so that's making it confusing. Let me move up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apply. All right, now I'll try to compare. I don't see anything different, really. Both use gravity, the both is kinematic. Mass one, why any of that matters, who cares? They both have a sphere, collider. Hmm. I think neither of them is tagged with anything, so what am I doing wrong? Let me just, out of curiosity, move him closer and see if they're... You know, that might have been it. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Is this bit of the UI somehow blocking the raycast? So, yeah, let's... That shouldn't be. But maybe it is. Mm, apparently not. Not getting any hits on him. What have I done? Put them as close as I can without overlapping. Oh no, I hit him. Five times and he's dead. Okay, what happened? I, I just moved him close. Why, why did that work? <laughs> uh, why did that work? Oh no! <laughs> There's got to be something obscuring the raycast that I'm just not aware of. Decadoom, two, three, four, fire over here, up here, up here, down here, down, nope, four, four, and five. Yeah, all right, it works. But um, something about, I think it's that UI, but okay, but it shouldn't be, so here's why. So right here it looks really like what's this giant thing, right? But um, that thing is this thing right here. It's this quit bar at the bottom. That's what that really is. But let's get crazy. Select, 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 select. All these game objects. And let's move them all away. Just out of paranoia. Now there should be no chance. Let's confirm that I can still hit it. Yep, okay. And now I will move the deck of doom and this guy both to the right portion where I was having problems. Yep, works right away. Maybe that was it. I am surprised, but um, that's interesting. See, I thought that that was only going to occur maybe in a world canvas, but you learn something every day. Okay, good. So maybe that was it. All right, so now we have mechanics of aiming, shooting, taking damage, and death. So I think that is a pretty good slice of functionality for today, or at least this session. Uh, probably next what we'll do is look at getting the ducks to spawn and um, come from the sides of the screen and fly across to simulate more of a duck hunting experience. So uh, thanks for joining me and we will see you next time.